Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. What's up? Today we have a very special guest who is the assistant pastor at Calvary Chapel San Jose with Pastor Mike McClure. They are being fined $2 million for being fully open and $30,000 each personally. And we're going to be talking about today how churches need to stand up for the truth. Carson, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to be with you. So before we get started, just letting everyone know this is a conversation, so we are just going to be able to talk. And um, we also want, Carson, for you to share who you are and kind of what you do at Calvary Chapel San Jose and also what's going on right now with your church. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm an assistant pastor here at Calvary Chapel San Jose. Uh, my wife, Megan, and I, and we have an 11-month-old daughter named Ivy as well. Oh, cool. I'll throw that in there for sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. My wife and I have the privilege of overseeing uh, the youth ministry, so that's junior high and high school. And we also oversee the young adults, 18 to 28-year-olds, and do a multitude of other things around the church, Any really anything that's needed. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a privilege to serve here. We've been here for um, just under two years. As I mentioned, I was sent out here by Pastor Ken Graves, Calvary Chapel Central, Maine. So I'm a long way from home. We're on the other side of the country, over here on the left coast. Um, I'm from a very, yeah, a very rural, um, just very... Um, very conservative, very stoic state of being. <laughs> yeah. living, Google uh, all those snow. guys are real conservative. Right? <laughs> exactly. And I'm coming all the way out here to uh, a different world. You know, like working with youth with your wife, like so many kids because not having school and it's probably way worse in California and just the suicide rates, those have gone up and just being able to have these kids like be able to go to youth group, be able to spend time with other godly Christian friends, like how important that is. Can you share just what you've seen and some stories of how important that is for the youth at your church? Yeah, I mean, it's been absolutely incredible. I mean, our, our youth group, just this last Friday, I had Pastor Ken Graves actually share because he was here. And we had about 100 junior hires and high schoolers where previously, before COVID, we had about 30 to 40. Okay. So there's just, I mean, there's so many youth in our community here in Santa Clara County in the, in the greater San Jose area who, again, like we've been talking about, just want fellowship, want to worship the Lord, want to open His Word. And so, um, I mean, so many kids who are who are struggling right now in our community with suicide, with depression, anxiety, and also, I will tell you this, with all the students being online for school, tremendous, you know, pornography mm -hmm. addiction, because they're on their computers all day long. And so these kids, I mean, they need to be cared for, tended to, and they need God's Word. So, um, it's been awesome to see all the students come, many from different churches, different backgrounds, um, different you know, different home lives, everything like that, and just see the new friendships that have been forming, new relationships, uh, and see all these students who are just eager to open up God's Word and hear from Him. It's been absolutely incredible and a privilege of mine to be a part of it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I think I think the scripture, I believe, what is Romans uh, five twenty, where sin abounds or iniquity abounds, Amen. grace abounds much more, and it's so neat to see how God's using this hard thing or bad thing, whatever you want to call it, for good to those that really love him. And so it's really cool. And, and I like that you also talked about and shared how it's we just we just think of like the things of depression, suicide. But I like that you brought up pornography in that because so many times um, that's not just happening with kids, adults, everyone, not just happening with men, women, too, has gone up like drastically. And so I think it's just important for us to remember that when the Bible talks about in, in James, confess your sins to one another so that you might be mm -hmm. healed. That's so powerful, that confession and that accountability and getting help. Because so many kids, I've been realizing because with us having youth group, my brother and I lead it, we just see that there are so many kids that are just hurting and they want to like share what's going on, but they don't know who to talk to. They feel like they can't talk to the parents, right? Because they're busy with um, their job and with every, all the craziness with covid so they're kind of neglected. And so it's cool being able to, we always joke, it doesn't take a, a village to raise a child. It takes a church. Like mm -hmm. I, the family, how important it is for not only the mom, right? Because we always see the moms bringing the kids to church, but the fathers to stand up and say, hey, we're going to church this Sunday, even though I'd rather, you know, not go. And I think it was, um, I think it was your pastor, Pastor Mike McClure, but they're talking about how if you just stop like one Sunday, oh, hey. 
COVID's happening. We can't meet. Well, let's let's do online services together. Let's watch it. And then the kids go in the kitchen, he was saying. And then, oh, hey, let's go watch a movie or something. And then you find out that it's just you're not going at all. And so right. that's why it's so important for the fathers to stand up and for the kids to not only get involved, but for the fathers to maybe ask their kids, like, hey, how are you doing? Are you struggling with this? Like, how can I help you maybe hold you accountable? So for you, how do right. you see how important that is um, for the men to stand up? Yeah, it's so important. Like you said, most people don't have the discipline to turn on you know, church on their computer, on their TV screen, and actually sit down and watch it. I mean, it's, one, it's just not the same. People zone out in church. I'm thinking, what do you do if you're on your couch? Yeah. You know? It's like uh, watching a fireplace online. You know? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't have the same. It looks the same, but not really, and it doesn't have any of the heat no warmth, or the warmth. Yeah. Yeah. And so most people don't have the discipline to do that, to sit down and actually even watch the full service and – I believe it was Barna Research who said that a whole third of people who went online and just started doing the whole online thing are completely gone now. They're gone. They're not even going to church in person or online. They're just gone. Uh, And so it's so important that dads bring bring not only their kids but their whole family. Men, you know, men really are the the pastors of their home. You know, priests of their home. So they need to really step up and take charge. Uh, and, and really just, um, you know, again, bring their kids, bring their wives, bring their families to church and guard just the spiritual well-being of their families. And we've seen a lot of men here doing that. So it's been really encouraging. And um, so you just had a conference. Uh, it was a men's conference. It was with Ken Graves, um, was Don McClure, uh, Pastor Raul Reese, and then your pastor, Mike McClure. But um, can you share just what that was about? And I know the main verse was Joshua 1, nine, talking about being strong and courageous. So hopefully you're listening. So just kidding. Um, <laughs> I can't, he but I he's like, I was running. I was running. I didn't have time to listen. Uh, but yeah. what was like, what are the things that stood out to you? Um, just even what your pastor Ken Graves was saying and that stuff too, of just men standing up and what does that look like? And do you think Ken should be a little more manly? Because he's kind of yeah, how you doing? I love that. I'm not good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was talking about testosterone levels in <laughs> you know America today and how they're so <laughs> yeah. He said they're so much lower than in times yeah. past. And and one of past other pastors on staff came to him and said, "You want to know why testosterone levels are so much lower in, in you know the culture around us? Because you have all the <laughs> yeah, testosterone." You took it yeah, yeah. And they, and I think also too the skinny jeans because it's like making everything so tight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I don't, how does Rob McCoy wear skinny jeans? I don't understand that. You know, he's such a good guy. And he wears skinny jeans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. still be friends with Pastor Ken. Yeah. 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 Ken, I, I'm sure I know Charlie dogs him, so I bet you Ken must dog him too. So, <laughs> yeah, the conference was, was awesome. I mean, we had about 400 men there. Uh, and it was all about, you know, you know, being, being strong and courageous, Joshua one nine, like, like you said, and it was our, our theme verse there. And, um, uh, actually, Pastor Rawl, unfortunately, wasn't able to make it. Um, you probably know Pastor Rawl has seizures, uh, and so he just had a, a seizure the day before, uh, and so was pretty weak and, and not able to come, so continue to lift him up in prayer. Um, he's he's on the mend right now. So uh, what we did is we had um, actually Marcus McClure, Pastor Mike's brother and Pastor Don's son, he actually shared his testimony in place of where Pastor Wall would be speaking. And so that was awesome. And, and actually Marcus shared his testimony and the importance of being a godly man within your household, like we were just talking about, and, and a godly father and a godly husband. So he did an awesome job. Um, but Pastor Ken and, and and Pastor Don both shared on on very uh, you know different things. Uh, Pastor Ken was talking about Acts chapter nine. He was talking about about Saul, you know, on the road to Damascus, and how five things were evident with uh, in in Saul's life and and in that story in Acts chapter nine. Uh, there are five R's. You know, he came to the revelation of who Jesus Christ was and what he had done. You know, that that bright light shone, brought him to you know you know brought him to his knees. You know, took him off of his feet, and he 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 came to the revelation of who Jesus Christ is and what he had done. And with that, there was this realization of his duty. He asked, what do you want me to do, Lord? You know, and likewise, we have a duty to God. What is it? Uh, There was also reliance upon the Holy Spirit. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, there was uh, repetition of daily disciplines. It says that that Saul, he increased all the more in strength. Mm. And then finally, relationships with other people. So there are these five R's that Pastor Ken talked about and how they should be evident in our lives if we're going to be courageous men of God. Uh, and then Pastor Don was in um, 
Habakkuk, and he was sharing on basically just the turmoil of the nation, everything that was going on, the unraveling of the nation, and all the, the things that were happening, and how Habakkuk, he he really he was, um, you know, he was he was distressed, he was fretting, he was like, Lord, how, you know, what, do you see everything that's going on around me in this nation? You know, everything is falling apart, Lord. What is going on? And he perceived that the Lord that, that the Lord wasn't speaking to him. He wasn't even he wasn't listening to him. He's like, Lord, do you see what's going on? Everything that's happening around us, the nation is just unraveling, much like you know, people today are saying, do you see what's going on in our nation today? Everything is falling apart. Everything is unraveling. And the Lord says that he's actually going to accomplish everything that he needs to through the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, Habakkuk is obviously even more confused by mm -hmm. that. Why are you going to use our enemies, these, these wicked people, uh, you know, to, to judge us? And how, how is this even going to work? All these things. He just he was completely perplexed. Um, but he came to the realization that he really didn't he didn't really need to know every little detail as long as he knew that God was is sovereign, he's in control and he's yeah. gonna work everything out. So um, that's what Pastor Don shared on. And then as I mentioned, you know, Marcus shared his testimony. So that, that was kind of the things that were shared with the men this last weekend. That's what that's what I was saying this Sunday, how you know, all of us, of course, I mean I'm pretty sure you would say we wanted, you know, Trump's not perfect, but we wanted Trump as president. But yet I really see that sometimes, you know, when we have someone like Trump who kind of, you know, cares about the church, seems like, and yet we get compliant or complacent, we get kind of relaxed. And it's sort of like when we see Biden and, and all the restrictions and everything, it sort of has awoken the true church to say, hey, wait a sec, we need, and I don't know about you, but I've seen kind of a surge. So I kind of said in a way, you know, give thanks for all things. I'll say, I don't really like Biden's policies. I don't like that he's not really there. But I like that it's sort of awakened the church to say, oh, my goodness, we can't be asleep at the wheel. We need to occupy. We need to be praying. We need to be speaking up. We need to be standing up for righteousness. And we need to be willing, as you know better than most, we need to be willing to be persecuted or have uh, consequences for standing up for truth. And that is I, so I see this. Yes, you know, the Romans eight twenty eight. God works all things together for good to those who love him are called. That even though what's happened to you is not technically good, but God is working it for good for you and for many other people, right? Kind of yeah. get, giving you some prominence and also being a lighthouse to those that are really hurting that, like you said, would have probably committed suicide if you guys hadn't been there. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. yeah. And I love like we can talk about too God's sovereignty because I think so many people – go to extremes they either are like they believe oh god is sovereign but we have no free will or they believe oh we have free will but they kind of just spit on god's sovereignty but especially with calvary well, it's all, right it's, like we, we're, it's all up to us they kind of we have people yeah. that say you didn't pray hard enough you that's why pray, trump yeah. isn't president we're like come on yeah. you know give me a break you know, yeah so. and so that's why yeah. we see that where we can relax right. is like oh sorry no, I was just saying, I apologize. Strike the balance, right? Striking the exactly. balance. Carson, when you say that balance, what would you say of that? I mean, I don't want to put you too weird at Calvinism Arminism, but it's funny how we have this guy. What's his name? It's up in Phoenix. Um, Jeff Durbin. Jeff Durbin, who's a hardcore Calvinist, really. He's kind of like a, he's a cool guy. To, Is that a, a yeah. Gia yeah, church? Gia. That, really so he's funny. really hardcore Calvinist, preterist. But he is basically saying his indictment subtly to people like us who believe in a pre-trib rapture is you guys kind of like, you know, give up, let it cra let the car crash. What what would you say since you're in the heat of it, of like you said, strike the balance? What would you say to the people that, you know, kind of because he would be more of a dominionist. We're going to usher in the kingdom. But Calvary's more of, hey, we know it's going to get worse before it gets better. But yet we're not supposed to. Right. We agree. We're not supposed to be apathetic and let go. We don't want to be the wicked. Where's your kind of take on the balance in that situation? Yeah, I mean, I think the bottom line is um, those aren't mutually exclusive things, you know, where, where sometimes they're treated that way. Like, you know, either God is sovereign or, you know, the responsibility of man. It's either or no, it's both. And because we see both in Scripture, we teach both. God is sovereign. That means just simply to possess supreme or ultimate power and authority. He is all powerful. But we absolutely have responsibility in and of ourselves. So that, we, you know, you, to deny one is to deny, you know, part of Scripture. And, um, and so, 
yeah, we know ultimately how things are going to play out in the end. The Lord has the, the final say, but still that doesn't, you know, we're not to ignore our duty and the responsibility has been placed on us, you know, what the Lord has called us to. We need both. Again, strike a balance between love and knowledge. We need both of those things, not just one. So that's what I would say to that is just absolutely God is sovereign. He is all powerful. He has the final say, the final word, but that that doesn't negate our responsibility and our duty that's clearly outlined in, in the word of God. We have to take a stand. Amen. And you, so, what would you base, I mean, Carson, in the sense of where, you know, because some people have a pre-trib rapture uh, that they kind of say, hey, you know, we kind of want it to get bad. We kind of want to Biden. How would you, What's what scriptural premise would you use to say why you guys are really saying no? You know, we know it's, we know eschatology, we know that it's going to get worse, but we need to keep trying to restrain evil, trying to speak truth, trying to step up. How What motivates you to say, even though you know with your eschatology of Calvary, that we're that it, things are going to get worse before they get better, right? That's why we're going to need to be raptured because, right? Before, before sure. once the restrainer's gone. But how do you? What motivates you to say when you got? You said personal fines up to a couple. You know, what is it? Twenty seven thousand. Twenty seven. Yeah. Twenty seven. So I mean, you're a young man, so that's that's a pretty good hit for you, right? I don't think you probably have five hundred thousand in the bank. So it's like <laughs> that's that's pretty intense. So what motivates you besides, of course, Jesus? But what scriptures could you encourage others that maybe are thinking, ah, you know, just who am I? Why should I get involved? Why should I risk, like Carson, being fined, these huge fines that could pretty much make life pretty hard for you? Well, I'd say the parable of the talents is a great one where the master gives talents to some of his servants, comes back, and he basically just, there's a, there's a day of reckoning. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a point where he calls each of those servants before him and says, what did you do with, with what I gave you? And obviously we know how it went for two of them. The other one, you know, he just took, the, took it, buried it in the dirt and didn't do anything with it. And he said, you know, you wicked and slothful servant, you know. And so I don't want, that's certainly one scripture that motivates me. Outer darkness. You know, the Lord had. Yeah. Sort, of, sort of scary. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's, that's one, you know, one that I can just think of right off the top of my head, the parable of the talents where uh, just such a responsibility, like you said, to occupy until he comes, not to just sit back and just do nothing, but to really take a stand and obey the word of God. So that's parable of talents is Amen. clear one, Amen. clear example. Um, do you have any closing thoughts or anything else you would like to share before we end? Oh, well, I want to ask one thing. Just thank you. Hold one more on, question. Hold on. Then we gotta go. So, is there any way besides your closing I'll see thoughts? You say that at the end. Is you were going to say? We're going to help. Oh, okay. Forward. Never mind. I'm we'll let up. you share your last thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just here for the eye candy. That's all I'm here for, Carson. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just thank, thank you guys so much for yeah. for having me on. Thank you guys for your support, for praying for us, for thinking about us. Um, because again, it it can get. Um, the enemy can can lie and just say you're in it alone. You know what I mean? You're, you're one, you know. But we know that there are many other Calvary chapels, many other churches who aren't even in the Calvary Chapel movement who are standing with us. So it's such an encouragement to know there are other people who are right there with us, uh, taking a stand and um, continue just to pray for us. And and if there's two things that I could ask you guys to pray for, it's just one pray like i said that the lord's will would be done you know we just we want the lord's will to be done that's it we're we have our own desires i mean you know lord you know if it'd be awesome if you know this would all go away but but i don't want that if it's not the lord's will exactly. you know what i mean i want the lord's will to be done and then second in, in acts chapter 4 it says look upon their threats and grant that with all boldness your servants might speak yep. your word that's so that's true. my yeah, my other, my other prayer just for boldness. You know, we, we see all the threats. The Lord sees it. We see it. And just I, we're praying for boldness as we go before the judge again or the, the enforcement officers or, or outside the courthouse or whatever it may be. We just want boldness to share the gospel. And what's cool is remember in the scripture it says that place was shaken mm -hmm. and they were filled with the Holy Ghost boldness. You're in California, so you could either literally be shaken. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's encouraging. <laughs> no, I'm um, did you want to say I'd also like to pray too is your pastor would be a little more humble because <laughs> i love them at the conference he goes i'm mike and they're like wait, wait. So chill. <laughs> he just walked and mic drop walked yeah. away i'm going man he's such a humble dude mm -hmm. so it's like i don't i don't know him personally but i've seen him at, i've seen so him around thankful but thankful uh, for him too and praying cool. for him yeah but we're, my, yeah we'll play tell him we love him even though he didn't want to be on with us it's all right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, he, is no, one, he is one of the most just humble uh, warriors that I've, I've ever met. It's a privilege to, to have him as our senior pastor. Cool. How, did, how did you get, I mean, not to be weird here, but so how did you go from 
from Maine to all the way across the country. I mean, how did that work out? I mean, did Ken and yeah. him were good friends and they just swapped you or what? Yeah, all the Calvaries are pretty interconnected, as you know. It's like one big family all the way across the country. But he actually came out for a men's conference with General Jerry Boykin in, in Maine two and a half years ago. That's where I first was introduced to him and expressed a need out here. And Pastor Mike and him are close. And, and so he said, hey, I got a guy for you and was sent out, you know, a year and a half later. That's awesome. So you're used yeah. to just saying, here I go, am, Lord. Here we go. I wish I was in Maine. I wish I was in Maine. No, just kidding. No. No, I'm just you're right where God wants you yeah, to be. Amen. And Carson, would you like to pray for us before we end? Amen. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Lord, thank you so much just for this opportunity, Lord, just to to fellowship, Lord, and to be able to speak to, to people who are in a different state, you know, thousands of miles away, Lord. What a privilege this is. Thank you, Lord, for just um, all the things that you're doing, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing here at Calvary Chapel San Jose and, and in the church, Lord, all across the country, Lord, and really the world. Lord, I pray that you would just continue, Lord, to accomplish your will in and through our lives, Lord. Continue to use us, empower us by your Holy Spirit, Lord. We can't do anything in and of our own strength. Pray, Lord, that you just give us boldness, Lord. We need boldness in this time and, and moving forward, Lord, more than ever before. Please give us boldness to speak clearly the truths in your word, to share the gospel with a, a, a sin-ridden world, Lord, who's just headed for, for hell. I pray, Lord, that we would share the message of your son, Jesus, who, who died on the cross, took our place, and paid the price for our sin that we can never pay, Lord. So please help us to, to have boldness to share that message with those around us. And Lord, we just pray that you would just continue to strengthen the church and refine the church through this season, Lord. Continue, Lord, just to, again, accomplish your will in and through us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you like to listen to us, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. Purchase one of our t-shirts on Teespring in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless.